What is hope? Is hope reasonable? Is it realistic? Does it help at all, or is it a retreat from reality? Hope is different from optimism in that hope does not necessarily presume or expect that the future will be good. Hope rather focuses on the possibility that the future will be good, while acknowledging that it might not be. Hope entails a desire for something good in the future and a belief that this is possible. But hope is more than just belief and desire. Thomas Aquinas proposed that hope is a desire for some good that arises out of the perception that this future good is difficult, but not impossible to obtain. Hope may extend beyond belief and desire to include a reason for action to try to obtain the future good. Hope fixes one's attention on that possibility that the future will be good and empowers one to act or to wait to receive that good, even in the midst of difficulties and uncertainty. However, it may sometimes seem that there are dangers in hoping, such as hope leading to complacency or an unrealistic set of expectations or to an otherworldliness that may not be conducive to appropriate action or not conducive to flourishing. But hope need not necessarily result in such things. One can have a realistic assessment of the situation and of the difficulties and uncertainties, and yet still hope. And such hope can sometimes be the motivation for action. But given these potential objections, we might reasonably wonder whether hope really is conducive to human well-being. At the Human Flourishing Program at Harvard, we have recently published a paper on the effects of hope on health and well-being. The study used data from about 13,000 older adult participants in the Health and Retirement Study and employed rigorous methodology to try to assess causation. We used longitudinal data collected over time to help ensure that a potential cause actually precedes its effects and analyze the evidence for the effect of hope on a wide range of health and well-being outcomes. We controlled for a rich set of demographic, physical, and psychological set of factors and used sensitivity analysis techniques to assess how robust the associations we identified were uh, to potential and measured confounding variables. And these approaches allow us to at least provide evidence about potential causal effects of hope on many aspects of well-being. What we found was that having high levels of hope led to slightly decreased mortality risk, about 16% lower during the four years of follow-up, as well as fewer chronic conditions. Those who hope subsequently had lower levels of depression and of negative affect and lower levels of loneliness. They subsequently also had notably higher levels of life satisfaction, of happiness, of purpose in life, and a sense of mastery and perhaps somewhat greater physical activity. We did not, however, find evidence for an effect of hope on all outcomes. Interestingly, we found little or no evidence for an association of hope with reduced subsequent smoking or binge drinking, and no evidence uh, for effects on, on conditions such as diabetes or hypertension or arthritis. Hope is not a panacea. It will not cure all ailments. Even the important associations with subsequently lower four-year mortality risk are smaller than analogous associations for volunteering or for religious service attendance, for example. However, our study did not uncover any detrimental effects of, uh, of hope on outcomes, and it did provide evidence that it has important effects on many health and well-being outcomes. The evidence from our study looking at these various outcomes certainly does suggest that the effects of hope, at least on average, are notably beneficial. But research is one thing. Realistically confronting the world we live in today is another. Can we truly hope today? As we face the difficulties and tensions and polarization within society, despair might seem the most reasonable response. But in fact, we need hope. We need to focus on the future, difficult, but possible good. We need reasons for action amidst the challenges. We need an investment in 
and a rebuilding of society. We need to work on those areas of social and cultural and political life that have deteriorated or declined. We need hope. We should moreover also clarify what our hopes are, what it is that we truly value. We need clarity on what matters most. We need to clarify what we as individuals and as a society value and what we hope for. What is it that we want and hope for our world? Clarifying our hopes and acting upon them may well help us to contribute to a fuller human flourishing. For those within the Christian tradition, there's also a deeper and more long-standing hope, a hope mysteriously grounded in the birth of Jesus Christ and all that followed from his life. It is a hope for a more final and powerful restoration to the good. Properly understood, it is not a hope that deters one from acting here and now, but one that gives reasons for such action so as to bring about a better world. It is a hope that is made manifest with its end ultimately attained in love, a love of neighbor and love of God, a love that we are to show one another. Let us hope that that may indeed be attained.